podcast listeners, we got a little bit of a different show for you today. Over the past decade, we've made an effort to educate our clients and investors, now over 80,000 strong, by publishing research and commentaries across the blog, academic papers, books, speeches, and now in the more modern social world, Twitter, YouTube, and this podcast. However, we still get a great many questions every day about our funds, many of which are broadly similar, so we wanted to try and use this platform to help educate shareholders as much as possible. You know, sometimes the spoken word provides a little more context and narrative than just an academic paper or fact sheet. And as always, the most important thing in investing is finding an approach that works for you, which may or may not involve any of our funds, which is totally fine. We just want our shareholders to be as informed as possible in what they're invested in. So enough intro. Please enjoy today's episode and our series of fun profiles. Matt Faber is the co-founder and chief investment officer at Cambria Investment Management. All opinions expressed by podcast participants are solely their own opinions and do not reflect the opinion of Cambria Investment Management or its affiliates. For more information, visit cambriainvestments.com. Howdy, podcast listeners. Today, we have a special episode in which I'm going to be talking about investing performance. As part of this discussion, we'll talk about what investors can expect from fund performance and on what sort of timeline. There's a lot to discuss, so let's jump right in. Early in 2021, we sent an email to our list detailing one of our worst performing funds. When was the last time you heard a manager do that? Here's what we said. With this in mind today, let's focus on an investing strategy that is assuredly not crushing it, but one that we could believe to be set for a rebound. Our Cambria Value and Momentum ETF, ticker VAMO, we call it VAMO. So why don't we just close down this fund like many companies do and funnel assets into what's working today? A recent study from the Investment Company Institute's ICI Factbook shows that nearly half of all mutual funds from 10 years ago have shut down or merged. The reason why? Because we still believe in the investment strategy. And guess what? As of writing this podcast episode for 2021, VAMO had a great year, despite being at least 50% hedged with S&P 500 futures. Maybe we should profile our funds that are not working more often. Here's our original email we sent in early 2021. If you were to believe all the fund marketing emails, every single asset manager would always be crushing it. The reason for this hype is obvious. It's easier to market strategies and raise assets with funds that are all performing well. If you read our recent profiles of Cambria's top performers, SYLD and TAIL, you would probably place us in that category too. However, we understand performance will wax and wane. We believe every asset class and investing strategy will have its day in the sun, as well as a great many days in the shade too. Most asset managers that have been around a few cycles have the scars to prove it. Performance chasing the hot funds and what's working right now is tempting, but is that the right decision? Shouldn't we rather be focusing on sound assets and strategies that are out of favor? Shouldn't we be considering the strategies that might be nearing the beginning of their time in the sun, rather than crowding into those strategies that have been in the sun for many years now and perhaps sunburn? Were you buying stocks at the depths of 2009? Or did it take you some quarters and years before you were convinced it was safe? Were you buying stocks past March 2020? when markets were down 30%, or did you wait until they recoup their losses? With this in mind, let's focus on an investing strategy that is assuredly not crushing it, but one that we believe could be set for a rebound, our Cambria Value and Momentum ETF, ticker symbol VAMO. When we originally pinned this article at the end of 2020, it seemed VAMO may have already taken a positive turn. Strategies with exposure to size and value factors have been outperforming the broad market since the beginning of the year and even back to early November. For prior to the beginning of the year, this investing strategy had been a stinker. Just how bad? For the one-year, three-year, and five-year time frames in the long-short category, Morningstar's percentile ranking for VAMO, based on total return, was 80% out of 212 funds, 96% out of 196 funds, and 97% out of 161 funds, respectively, as of 12-31-2020. So are we just total morons, or is the investing strategy broken? Or perhaps, is it simply going through a rough patch? Let's dig under the hood. At its core, the fund's investing strategy seeks to accomplish two things. Give investors exposure to stocks ranking highly on value and momentum metrics. Two, help investors hedge their overall stock exposure incrementally based on broad market value and trend metrics. For example, right now it is approximately 50% hedged. So how have all these exposures impacted performance? Poorly. Virtually all of them have acted as headwinds in recent years. 
value combined with momentum exposure has underperformed growth in market cap weighted indexes. That's strike one. The broad value hedge has dragged on returns as the U.S. stock market has continued to get more expensive. Strike two. The broad trend hedge has hurt as the U.S. stock market has rolled over into downtrends only to rip right back up into new highs. Strike three. And to top it all off, the choice of hedge also hurts, which is the S&P 500 index. Strike four. Ouch. Now, the only positive of this story is that anytime we get too despondent about the performance of this fund, we remind ourselves what we believe is the root of all of this, a temporary issue related to a particular market approach. Most market-neutral style funds from giant shops in the industry have been equally as stinky. We believe this reflects how this market approach simply isn't in favor today. So why don't we just close down this fund, like many companies do, and funnel assets into what's working today? A recent study from the Investment Company Institute, ICI Factbook, shows that nearly half of all mutual funds from 10 years ago have shut down or merged because we still believe in the investing strategy. Furthering that point, we believe that with investing, no investment strategy dominates year in, year out. Instead, seasons come and go. The challenge is no one knows how long a season will last. also can be very difficult to identify when a season is actually changing. P.S. If you're looking for a good science fiction book, check out the fifth season. Often by the time, hindsight pr proves that there's been a true regime shift in markets and investing strategy B is now performing investing strategy A. An investor who missed this shift might be down big, holding on to the old investing strategy or suffering an opportunity cost and not being up in the new strategy. In past blog posts, I've highlighted a similar point by looking at Warren Buffett, a staunch value investor who has remained faithful to his market approach throughout all sorts of investing styles du jour. An investor who put 10 grand into Berkshire Hathaway in 1965 would now have about $200 million. That's $200 million. Compare that to a still respectable approximate $2 million for the broad stock market. Most people could never have endured the roller coaster to get there. It's easy to fantasize about the $200 million finish line, but think about suffering through one of Berkshire's multiple 50% drawdowns as Buffett's value approach fell out of style with the prevailing market regime. Buffett and Friends stock picks and similarly Berkshire stock have gone long periods underperforming the broad U.S. stock market. While we don't believe VAMO will continue to underperform, we do believe seasons underperformance is often the name of the game. We also believe the way to do well in this game is by remaining faithful to styles that research suggests will reward investors in the long run. We're confident a time will come again when VAMO's headwinds turn to tailwinds. Value trend and small cap exposures would all potentially help performance as likely would a long bear market in stocks, if we ever have one again. Perhaps the tailwind is even taking shape in front of our eyes. AQR's Cliff Asnes laid out the facts on just how attractive value investing looked recently in his blog, Is Systematic Value Investing Dead? The spread between inexpensive and expensive stocks reached historic magnitudes. He did demonstrated the number of value metrics and composites posted a value spread that was at or near the 100 percentile ranking going back to 1967. In other words, there hasn't been a better opportunity to own value stocks going back over 50 years. And indeed, it has been a long and difficult season for value and other exposures VAMO relies on. But if it changes, this fund could eventually see its day in the sun. So as you review your marketing emails with everyone bragging about crushing it, maybe be wise to reflect and think, what's not crushing it? And might we be closer to the day in which that investing strategy begins crushing it? For more information, you can visit CambriaFonds.com or reach out to us at 310-683-5500. Thanks for listening and good investing. This is the blog we referenced earlier in the piece is Systematic Value Investing Dead on the AQR Capital Management website, aqr.com forward slash insights forward slash perspectives forward slash is Systematic Value Investing Dead. Alps Distributors, Inc. is not related to Meb Faber or MebFaber.com. Alps Distributors, Inc. is not related to AQR Capital Management. Definitions, S&P 500 index. The S&P 500 index is an index of 500 stocks chosen for market size, liquidity, and industry grouping. Among other factors, the S&P 500 is designed to be a leading indicator of U.S. equities and is meant to reflect the risk return characteristics of the large cap universe. Value spread. Used here is in reference to the ratio of stock valuations of expensive stocks to stock valuations of inexpensive stocks. Futures. Derivative financial contracts that obligate the parties to transact an asset and a predetermined future date and price. S&P 500 futures. S&P 500 futures, also known as E-mini, is a stock market index futures contract traded on the CME. S&P 500 futures based off the S&P 500 stock index. The value of one contract is 50 times as much the value of the S&P 500 index. Market neutral style funds. A market neutral fund is a hedge fund that seeks a profit regardless of upward or downward market environment, typically through the use of paired long and short strategies or derivatives. Value factors. 
Factor investing is an investing approach that involves targeting quantifiable firm characteristics or factors that can explain differences in stock returns. Security characteristics that may be included in a value factor based approach include price to book and profitability, among others. Returns for periods greater than one year are analyzed. The performance data quota represents past performance and does not guarantee future results. Investing return and principal value of an investment will fluctuate so that investors' shares when sold or redeemed may be worth more or less than the original cost. Current performance may be higher or lower than the performance quoted. Market price returns based upon the midpoint of the bid-ask spread at 4 p.m. Eastern time do not represent return you would receive if you traded shares at other times. Performance data current to the most recent month, please call 855-383-4636 or ETF info or visit CambryFunds.com. Index returns are for illustrative purpose only and do not reflect any management fees. Transaction costs or expenses, indexes are unmanaged and one cannot directly invest in an index. To determine if this fund is appropriate investment for you, carefully consider the fund's investment objectives, risk factors, charges, and expense before investing. This and other information can be found on the fund's perspectives can be obtained by calling 855-383-4636, also known as ETF Info, or visiting our website, cambryfunds.com. Read the perspectives carefully before investing or sending money. Cambria ETFs are distributed by Alps Distributors, Inc., 1290 Broadway, Suite 1000, Denver, Colorado, 80203, which is not affiliated with Cambria Investment Management LP, the investment advisor for the fund. Shares are bought and sold at market price, closing price, not an asset value, and are not individually redeemed from the fund. Market price returns are based on the midpoint of the bid-ask spread at 4 p.m. Eastern time when an NAV is normally determined. Do not represent the return you would receive if you trade at other times. Buying and selling shares will result in brokerage commissions. Brokerage commissions will reduce returns. The fund is actively managed. There's no guarantee the fund will achieve its investing goal. Investing involves risk, including the possible loss of principal. Investments in smaller companies, which typically exhibit higher volatility. The fund is actively managed using proprietary strategies and processes. There can be no guarantee these strategies and processes will produce the intended results and no guarantee the fund will achieve its investment objective. With short sales, you risk paying more for security than you receive from its sale. Short sale losses are potentially unlimited and expenses involved with shorting investing strategy may negatively impact the performance of the fund. The fund may hedge up to 100% of the value of the fund's long portfolio. The fund may use derivatives to attempt to effectuate such hedging during times when the advisor believes the U.S. market is overvalued from a valuation standpoint or models identify unfavorable trends and momentum in the U.S. equity market. The primary risk of derivative instruments is the change in the market value of securities held by the fund and that of derivative instruments rating the securities may or may not be proportionate. Derivatives are also subject to illiquidity and counterparty risk. Derivatives are also more volatile than other instruments and may magnify the fund's gain or losses. There's no guarantee dividends will be paid. Diversification may not protect against market losses. 2022 Morningstar, Inc. All rights reserved. The information contained herein is proprietary Morningstar and its content providers may not be copied or distributed and is not warranted to be accurate, complete, or timely. Neither Morningstar nor its content providers are responsible.